Yeah. Well, welcome back. Welcome to or welcome back to TBN. What we do over here on this stream is besides our sick dancing skills, obviously, what we do is unpack some news and give our hot takes on some news as it relates to the world of dancing, the world of vaping, yeah. tobacco, tobacco control, tobacco harm reduction, uh, cigarettes, smoking, uh, dependence, science, policy. We cover it. Uh, we, we try to cover it all over here. I'm your freedom loving libertarian host, uh, Grim Green, now joined by my far left fact checker and president of CASA. It's Danielle oh, no. Jones, everybody. Danielle Jones. Danielle Jones. What's it Hi. like being Hi. president of CASA? Does food taste better now? You're just. <laughs> It feels, <laughs> um, <laughs> or is it just yeah. a lot more work? It's it's a it's some more it's more work. It's a bit yeah. more work. Yeah, mm. more like decision making. Mm. Um, yeah, probably some more paperwork soon. I'm well, guessing. That sounds not yeah. as fun. But congratulations! I mean, you again. know, <laughs> responsibility things. You know, yeah, responsibility. How, how it goes. Yeah. Well, I, I'm excited for the future of the consumer advocates for smoke free alternatives. Uh, definitely. And uh, thank you guys for being here. Like I said, we're going to spread some truth butter today. We're going to talk about some news. We're going to talk about some sciencey things. We're going to, and and here's the thing, moving forward, like for the rest of the life of this stream, I don't ever picture a week going by where we don't at least mention Mike Bloomberg in the World Health Organization. You know, I, know, I feel right? like it's just going to be a constant thing until like something course corrects but you know we're gonna dig into mike bloomberg and the world health organization just a little bit today and we're also going to uh we're also going to be celebrating really this rhode island representative unbelievable changed her completely changed her stance on vaping this is huge this is a huge deal and i think this shows we we can change minds we can change minds and yeah. your stories really, really, really do matter. Really? So much. So much. In fact, I saw someone just today on Twitter posted a, a link to the testimonials from CASA when someone was talking about, oh, there's no evidence or anecdotes mm -hmm. or something like that. And someone posted the mm -hmm. CASA testimonials and said, oh, okay, well, here's a few, you know, 15,000 testimonials. You yeah. Know, to contr you know, uh, it's great. It's great. So tell your stories, do the CASA testimonials. Yeah, New Wave Dave. I love sciencey things too. And we've got some interesting sciencey things tonight. But uh, let's just start this off. Here, let's do the newsy bits. I will never get sick of that song or dance no, to that song. You need the finger, you need finger the dancing for really that song. It, yeah. It's, <laughs> It's like synthy, like synthy porn, yeah. porn funk. Yeah, just kinda, mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Fingers. Well, speaking of that, um, all my Canadian fam, I, I saw Pam here. She's the only confirmed Canadian that I know of for sure. Uh, Rights for Vapors up there in the UK. Good organization to get involved with. They do a lot of call to actions. Um, Canada is kind of dealing right now with a combination of a nicotine cap and a flavor ban and so i'm going to post a link additionally to the tobaccokills.ca website it's just two calls to actions and do this if you're a if you're a canadian this is just for canadia and i had some time you know last week danielle we were talking about this tobaccokills.ca web address and i was like oh i kind of like it and you're like oh, i don't really like that i've come around i've changed my mind i don't oh. i don't super love this anymore i just don't super love it anymore because it's not it's, you know, it's like uh, alarming, right? It's effective, yeah. I guess, but it's not really super accurate. Not all no, tobacco and it's just, kills. It's prohibition-y. It, like, it is. Isn't it There's a spectrum and it doesn't really, I'm not trying to like be mean to whoever made this website. Sure, I'm not. Sure, sure. But if you want my opinion on it, I think the URL could have been different. I think it could have been different too. Shout out Dave Lloyd. We got another uh, confirmed Canadian in the chat. Dave Lloyd, I appreciate you. You and oh, Pam. Oh, look at all the Canadians. Look at these. You and Pam and Bronco, you guys go to tobaccokills.ca and follow uh, rights for vapors. And yeah, I decided I don't really like this 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 web address, but it's kind of it's all that there is right now in Canada. It's, so it's, we'll just run it's what it. it is. It's, okay. It is what but, it is, you know. right? 
if you want our opinion, we would have suggested other URLs. Well, well, and it's really interesting when you go to, because you can go to tobaccokills.ca and they have a, a Facebook group as well. So if you're Canadian Vapor, you get hooked up with the Canadian, you know, tobaccokills.ca Facebook group and their messaging kind of changes a little bit. Like when you get to the Facebook group, it's suddenly like, oh, flavors save lives. Mm -hmm. And it's not tobacco. Much kill, better. Right. And so much better. Right. It's not tobacco kills anymore. It's flavors right. save lives. And one thing that I think is interesting that's happening in Canada is they're having this nicotine, possible nicotine cap as legislation coming through, but they also have this possible flavor ban kind of running neck and neck with each other. And what I see happening with Canadian vapors is they're against a flavor ban, but they're not necessarily against a nicotine cap. And so that now there's all this confusion of, of vapors in Canada that, that only want to do the call to action for the flavors, but don't care about the call to action for the nicotine cap. And so right. it's kind of like this you kind of have to be against both. I get it that you only really want to be against one, but you kind of have to be against both. I just feel right. like you do. If because you're you, not, you're, you're negotiating with. I mean, I'm, you're not negotiating with normal people. Nope. This is kind of like negotiating nope. with terrorists, right? So yes. not really, but kind of. They're wildly unreasonable, and you might think to yourself, oh, oh if we give them the nicotine cap, they'll leave us alone on that. No, honey, right. that's, no, not, how that that's works. not how that works. They will just all. be like, look, we can win. Let's yeah. go harder and double down on everything. Like exactly. these are take no prisoners type people that you're talking about. They want so, no. the most regulations. They want Right. They want the All most regulations it. and they're going to try to get away with the most regulations unless they sense any pushback. And I mean, right. could you imagine if all of the vapors in Canada, and I'm not saying, you know, this is a too broad of a generalization, but if they all did the flavor ban call to action and nobody did the nicotine ban call to action, all the government of Canada goes, all they say is, oh, look how easy that nicotine cap was. We got no right. pushback on it. What else can we do to vaping? What else can we yep. do to curtail interest in vaping? Because they right. think that they'll get no resistance. So it's important, really important, even if it's not like this is the even if you I'm don't use die on, you know, right. My neck, right? right? Even if you don't use it, yes. somebody else does, somebody right? Somebody else and does. You kind of have to think about that person. Even if it's not you, be a selfless vapor, guys. Uh, vape geek, I would definitely agree with that. Banning zero nick is worse than ban than a twenty milligram cap. I think that's an interesting take that I honestly kind of agree with. I honestly kind of agree with it. But yes, I mean, sure, banning everything is better than a nicotine cap. Like, of course, <laughs> right. but we don't. We're not here to pick like the least Which, bad of the things because they want right? to do both. They want to do all of it. There's they no do option. All of the things. If you just do this one, then it'll prevent them from doing the worst one. That's not how tobacco control works. Ne exactly, Neferon. Damn it. Never give an inch. I saw su two super chats come in there. Dave Lloyd, a Canadian. Legion Vape sent me. Hello, chat. Hello, Dave Lloyd. I appreciate you being here. And then we got one from Real Jim Shady here. I think they're trying to bait people that are against smoking into clicking and then shoving vape truth in their faces. Smart tactic. It is. I mean, it, it's a it is a it's a smarmy tactic is what it is. If this was the antis doing it with like some sort of uh, website that vapors would click on. But then when they click on it, this website tries to convince them that vaping's really bad and it doesn't work. If they were doing that, we would go look at those shady underhanded tactics that the antis are using. But then when we do it, we go, oh, that's kind of cool. We can do it, too. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, uh, you're either going to play their games or you're not, and you can't half right. play them. You know, right. once you start down that dark path forever, will it consume your destiny? As Yoda said. So I prefer just not to play the dirty games, you know? Right. And um, not to use prohibitionist language because you yeah, don't, we don't support prohibitionist that language. No, of course so not. So why, you know, why like, it's just, it's not empathetic and it's not like, no, no. obviously it doesn't work on people who smoke. Right. Like, how many times have you guys, as smokers, had someone walk up to you and be like, you know, that's going to kill you, right? Right. Like, did that, were you like, oh, really? Oh, my God. <laughs> I, 
Like, did that, you know, no, that doesn't, that's not an effective, t- and it, I think if anything, when people did that to me, I was like, fuck you, I'm going to keep yeah, smoking, you know what I mean? cigarettes now. Right? Like, yeah. watch me, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, it's not. It's just not, it doesn't have the effect that, like, that you think it's going to. I just, I don't, I'm, again, I feel bad for the Canadians. I'm not trying to, like, beat them up or anything. I just, yeah, yeah. I, I think... Yeah. There, you know, and also- there are tobacco products on a spectrum, right? Like as a CASA member, we, you know, support the use of like smokeless tobacco, for example, which is still a tobacco product that doesn't kill people. So saying tobacco kills as a blanket statement sure. also is not scientifically accurate, really. Nope. And that covers some of the products that I, for one, would be happy to see someone who smokes switch to. I would much rather they switch to snooze than smoke cigarettes. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't tobaccokills.ca doesn't leave any room for that personally for me. Again, this organization may have different priorities and different, you know, and I don't mean to, you know, I'm not trying to be mean again to the Canadians. You guys are super cute and you say sorry and it's adorable. I'm not trying to beat you up. I love you to death. But, you know, perhaps next time maybe consider not all tobacco does kill. There is a spectrum of harm. Spectrum of harm that FDA is well aware of well aware of so it's out there tobacco kills.ca you can get over there um there's a there's a minute where's this flavor ban happening minnesota there's a minnesota flavor ban um i'll put a call to action link down in the description hf 904 would ban the sale of vapor products and flavors other than tobacco um casa is tracking this bill and we will update it as it moves forward so here's what you can do today do the call to action Definitely do the call to action and I don't, do the call. And I don't want to read this whole thing, but there's a great little blurb in here and I don't know who wrote it. It's really well done. Uh, just basically posing the question, well, why does standing up to a flavor ban even matter in a post PMTA world? And you I can thank Alex Clark for that. I, it's really well done. I was, I thought I saw that and I thought, yeah, why does this fucking matter? And so I clicked on it. And by the time I got to the bottom, I went, okay, yeah, this matters. Let's do the call to action. And it's, I mean, it's a lot of the same reasons we talked about uh, for Canada as well. But there is a potential flavor ban in Minnesota that we're trying to stop. And there's still part two of the USPS uh, call to action as well, where you mm-hmm. contact uh, all of the, your Congress people and mm-hmm. I just wanted to read this note again because it just upsets me so tremendously. Kasa has been made aware that some lawmakers are refusing to acknowledge the validity, validity of consu- organized consumer campaigns and are insisting their constituents contact them directly via their website. What? Yeah. What is that? How do they so get we've to been- do that? So we've had <laughs> members that have been... So Kasa has a program, by the way, if you did not know this that when you use our system to email your reps, a lot of times you'll get some sort of like auto or not response back to you about what you submitted to them. And you can forward that to CASA. Um, and we keep an eye on those just to see like what the lawmakers are saying back to you. Sometimes it's just a blanket, you know, yeah. like there's no point in reading Diane Feinstein's, Generally, right? She hasn't yeah. it's updated it since like paste. 2015, yep. like, you know. Paste. Right. But some of them are interesting. Like sometimes we'll see some movement on a lawmaker or something like that from that Mm -hmm. response that they send back. And so we've been having members sending us responses um, that basically say like, oh, I see that you, you know, basically used the CASA website or the system that we use to send them, you know, help them send the message. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sorry, but we cannot, um, you know, we can't validate um, that this is legitimate so if you want to actually for realsies, you know, reach me, you need to go directly to my website and right. then use the form on my website. And right. it's like, it's a, it's like, I, I know you guys all got organized and started this consumer org to protect your rights from me, but I, I don't read any emails from that. Sorry. Just, yeah, no, I don't, I don't. I, you guys need to be separated. Contact me individually by yourselves. Right. No coordinated efforts. No coordinated efforts. You can't be coordinated. I refuse to talk to anybody that's coordinated. Horse shit. Horse shit. So Kasa is recommending that you copy paste the comments. You can use the little legislator lookup tool on Kasa to find your legislator. 
It's dumb, and it's just one more fucking step. step. Exactly. I, in my opinion, there's two reasons they do this. And it's not a huge majority that do this, but there's always like a small amount that do. They're either trying to make it more difficult for you to voice your opinion to them because they don't really want to hear your opinion. That's what it and, seems like. <laughs> and or they're just trying to increase traffic to their website because they want support oh. donations, basically. So I think it's one or both of those, essentially. <sighs> Yeah. They work My for sentiments. us. I mean, exactly. I'm pretty sure I remember that politicians work for us. And I think it was our taxes that paid their salaries. I don't exactly I recall. I feel like that's like in that constitution <laughs> that thing, thing or something. Don't like, politicians work for us? Don't, don't, don't they? Uh, wait, what was the exact phrase? They govern with the consent of the people. Something mm -hmm. like that. I think. I think I remember a really important document that mentioned something like this. So it's great. So I think it's great that a congressman can just go, meh, I'm going to ignore it. Only contact me the right way. That's what it sounds like. To contact yeah. me the right way. My mm -hmm. preferred way. Yeah. So obnoxious. Um, but moving on from that, and of course, I'll post links down in the description. Uh, moving on from that, Vapril. 2021 vaping awareness month so this is a thing that's been going on in the united kingdom for the last two years this is the third year of april it's organized by the uh ukvia the uk vaping industry association ukvia uk via uk vaping industry association and essentially what april is vaping awareness month they do this like in conjunction with local vape shops. Um, they have all sorts of literature that you can download. If you go to the Vapril website, which I'll have a link down in the description, um, you can sign up and get access to all sorts of like social media type of posts and uh, documents and posters to hang up. These are things to post on your social media during Vapril. Vaping is 95% less harmful than smoking. Public Health England, Vapril.org, Vaping Matters. Uh, yeah, uh, more social media stuff. 2019 clinical trial. You know, we talked about this. Smokers who switched to e-cigarettes completely experienced the largest improvement in their vascular health, getting close to healthy control. Public Health England. Vapril is a big European, mostly United Kingdom, like vaping awareness thing. They encourage everybody to take part in it, share their stories. They encourage uh, vape shops to get involved. They have big posters you can download and print off for your vape shop that say things like vaping is 95% less harmful, you know, come inside and ask one of our specialists how to switch today. They're really, really pushing uh, vaping in the United Kingdom. Not, you know, it's the United Kingdom, right? So it's not crazy shocking. It bums me out being a, uh, a, a person in the United States that I don't get to take part in vapor you know, to the fullest extent, but I think it would be cool if some U.S. vapors, maybe during the month of April, posted out some stuff from the Vapril website, kind of raising vaping awareness, because, you know, why only limit it to the U.K.? They also include all sorts of, like, informational stuff you can post on your, on your social media, like, hi, pods, look, you're a smoker, you don't know what pods are, maybe you've heard the term pods, Here's what a pod is. Vapril, we're going to teach you about pods. We're going to teach you about nicotine. We're going to teach you about uh, vaping increases the likelihood of a successful cigarette quit attempt by 50%. Public Health England 2018. It's just such a nice, stark contrast to the news that we've been getting from like, you know, Bloomberg and FDA and Rita Wasserman who wants FDA to ignore the PMTA process, which... Oh, you mean Debbie? Debbie, 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 Wasser, Debbie Wasserman. Sorry, what I was I like, Rita? wait, no, yeah, Rita, Rita. It's not Rita. I don't even know where the name. Debbie. is. where did Rita? I have no idea. I don't even know anybody named Rita. I don't either. That's bizarre. Debbie, it's Debbie, Good old Debbie, Debbie Wasserman, Schultz, Schultz. Such a nice. She's got contrast. that hyphenated Schultz Wasserman Schultz. I think that's right. She's been sure in. Did you see, this isn't scheduled in the TBN stream, but did you see the response from Mark uh, Gun Gunther? Yes! 
Oh my gosh. I love How spectacular him. was that? I love I'm that. So into him right now. Yeah, he's uh he's really doing it for me. But Vapril. Vapril's great. Vaping Awareness Month. Uh I love that it's my birthday month, April, and it's also Vaping Awareness Month. So Vapril, and I love it. So just go over to vapril.org and, and see what there is to see. You can sign up. You can get some social media stuff to post out on social media. You can get posters for your vape shops if you're in the United Kingdom. I mean, they're really, really pushing hot. It's so bizarre <laughs> being in the United States, seeing their government push so hard for vaping. I'll just say it. I'm jealous, right? I have serious UK FOMO. Serious UK FOMO. Uh, Addy Tooney, very gracious of you for that super chat, brother. I appreciate you. Jake Scrapwood, I can ship a turd, <laughs> but life-saving vaping devices? No, you aren't sm smart enough to know what's good for you. Feels that way, doesn't it, Jake? It does kind of feel that way. We'll talk about this when we get to uh, discussing the World Health Organization, but that seems like their firm stance is you're not smart enough to understand this. You're not smart enough to vape. Dimlet Knight. I will decide. For you. I will decide for you. Dimlet Knight says stuck in the hospital right now with some stomach issues. Oh, bro. Ooh. When they ask if I smoke, I say I vape and they drop it. Shout out to everyone. Uh, I hope to be home for the cool kids. Hang. Yes. Dimlet Knight. I get home soon. All my best to you. Get, get rid of those stomach issues. That's uh, that sounds no good. That sounds no good, Dimlet Knight. Stomach issues are the worst. Stomach issues are the worst. It's awful. I have, uh, it's not GERD, but it's uh, like a precursor to GERD. I have like gastro refluxy stuff. Oh, I'm and, on the Prilosec uh, not train, or no, not even Prilosec. I, upg I upgraded bad. to Nexium 24-7 without fail. Dang. I and yeah. yeah, I'm trying to control it. Like my doctor, my ENT guy was like, Oh, you can control this with your diet if you don't eat too late or blah, 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 and all this stuff. So I'm trying to deal with it. But I occasionally I wake up in the morning and it's like, oh, my stomach and I can feel like gas. And I sit up and let out these like gross burps that have just been sitting in my stomach like all night. It's gross. Mm. Anyway, no, dude, if I don't take my issues. Nexium every morning like clockwork by noon, even if I eat nothing. Like yeah. I literally consume zero food. Uh -huh. I will already have heartburn by noon. Awful. Like with, no, it is, it is, awful. it is a problem. I don't Let want to, uh, yeah, that is awful. It's pretty bad. But you know, what's not awful. <laughs> <laughs> what may, how was that segue? That was a good segue. <laughs> what made good. this Rhode Island legislator change her mind about vaping? This is, this is spectacular. We're going to have a little bit of uh, story time here with Groom Green. Let me turn down my mm -hmm. brightness. And I'm going to read this article from Filter Magazine written by the great Alex Norcia. You know, Alex Norcia, he used to write for Vice. He's written for the New York Times. He's written for a lot. He's just a really smart journalist. What Who gets made? It? He gets it. He gets it. Alex Norcia, I feel like the vape industry and Alex Norcia are going to be traveling down the same path for, for quite a while. He's been writing like crazy about tobacco control and, and the vape landscape. Nothing, nothing but good things are going to come out of uh, Alex Norcia being on our side. But Representative Julie Casimiro in Rhode Island completely changed her mind on vaping. Come completely changed her mind on vaping. She was a flavor ban, Evali, protect the kids, let's ban vaping, flavors just to protect the kids. That's she, that's who she was. She was basically Debbie Wasserman. Mm -hmm. She was basically on that Debbie Wasserman team. Mm -hmm. In September 2019, when cases of Evali lung injuries peaked in the United States and news outlets began aggressively covering the subject, Rhode Island Representative Julie Casimiro did what many politicians had done. She called for the prohibition of flavored vaping products. Not, not a surprising, uh, no, not a surprising, not uncommon. not uncommon, not a surprising stance to take. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had not yet determined, as they belatedly did later that fall, that the mysterious lung illnesses were coming from, 
vitamin E acetate found in tainted illicit, ready? Everybody say it together, THC cartridges, yeah. And there was already widespread concern, again fueled by sensationalized media coverage that a new generation of teenagers had become hooked on nicotine, not through cigarettes, but through the burgeoning technology of vaping in an array of attractive flavors, widely portrayed as being designed to entice kids. Representative Casimiro, who represents North Kingstown in Exeter and District 31, accepted the prevailing received wisdom. That same month, then-Governor Gianna Raimondio, now the U.S. Secretary of Commerce. Whoa, really? She's the U.S. Secretary of Commerce now? If Alex says so. Well, I have no reason to not believe Alex. This governor issued a temporary ban on flavors in Rhode Island, and then the health department made that ban permanent. Rhode Island has, as of at least right now, a permanent flavor ban. But Casimiro, a Democrat, soon did something that many politicians haven't done. She changed her mind about vaping. <sighs> By the way, a Democrat. Democrat. I'm say that again changed for her those mind in about the back. Vaping. A Democrat. I know. Vaping is not a partisan issue. I mean, I, I try to drive that point home. The opposition to vaping is completely bipartisan. So defending vaping should also be completely bipartisan. That we're not going to succeed if we don't do it that way. I'm sorry. Only weeks after calling for the ban, Casimiro, uh, along with Mike Runchy, a CEO of Giant Vapes, and Dino Bakari, the white horse vapor owner, wrote an op-ed for the Providence Journal advocating for sensible vaping policies. Her shift was surprisingly easy. Uh, I got inundated with calls after I supported the ban, Casimiro told Filter. So I just met with people specifically. I met with my constituents who used vaping devices to quit smoking. So after she comes out in favor of this Rhode Island flavor ban, vapors called her and lit up her phone lines in resistance to this. Casaw call to action. We'll probably put yeah. that out there. Maybe probably following a casa call to partially. action. Partially, I would say most definitely following a casa call to action. She noticed all of these phone calls and decided, "I'm going to meet with my constituents." This is what politics is supposed to look like. Uh-huh. This is what it's supposed to look like. So I just met with people, she says. She even toured a uh, white house, white horse vapor in North Providence with Bakari, where she saw for herself the sort of customers who walk through the door. I watched adults come in and ask for strawberry shortcake flavors, Casimiro said. We need to regulate it so people can continue to use vaping products as harm reduction tools. I mean, yeah, huge, huge huge because of vapors this 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 happened casimir because you did the things you made the phone calls you wrote the emails and you reached out to, you know that thing that casa is forever asking you to do that not a whole heck a lot of you do that thing it actually works when you all do it <laughs> It does. It can. It, does. it can work. The, literally, the strength of it rests on the consumer's shoulders. Yes. So it's only as strong as the consumers are, you know. Yes. That's what, that's, you know. The perfect way to say it. Pretty, pretty perfect way. It's all up to us. Um, he he goes on, and I promise this isn't a super long article, but you guys are all on the edge of your seats, right? Casimiro didn't just publicly walk back her previous comments. She took action. In mid-February of this year, she helped introduce a new vaping bill, which finally had a committee hearing this past week after COVID-related delays. HH5548 lays out penalties for selling vaping products to minors. Sure. Outlines licensing requirements. Absolutely. Absolutely places strict rules on advertisements. They can't contain terms like candy. Sure. Display certain images or reference pop culture like video games or animated TV shows that are known to appeal to minors. Absolutely. I see. I mean, that's IP protection also. So I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. No problems with that. There's literally zero problems with that. HH5548 would also repeal Rhode Island's established flavor ban and allow adult users to once again buy and vape 
whatever regulated flavor they choose. Casimiro's nuanced approach to vaping is rare among legislators, even as other harm reduction policies and drug legalization or decriminalization bills catch on throughout the country. Many Democratic elected officials have either pushed for or supported blanket flavor bans. For example, states such as New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, lawmakers behind such moves almost always cite one reason, to protect the kids. Adult vapors and the adult smokers in need of safer options are typically left out of the discussion. It doesn't matter how many adult vapors explain that flavors are what made them transition from combustibles to vaping, as they didn't want to vape a tobacco flavor, a taste they were actively trying to leave behind because it reminded them of cigarettes. And it doesn't matter that the mom and pop vape shops where many buy these safer products are not inextricably inextricably linked to big tobacco. That was like the biggest hit. I, I, I know even, it's uh, a tricky one. What? Inextricably. I got you fam. I'm your wingman. I got that, you. That's why you're here. Inextricably linked to big tobacco. Casimiro is optimistic about this bill, but says that regardless of the outcome, and this is why this is where I fall in love with Casimiro. This is where she becomes my hero from Rhode Island. Her goal will be to continue educating people, though it's of course difficult to educate those that do not wish to be educated. For instance, she said, the campaign for tobacco for kids, they don't want to hear anything about it. Adult vaping, Casimiro concluded, is not the issue. <sighs> that might be my favorite part. I love that. I love this so much that she says, regardless of the outcome of this bill, even if we can't do this, I my goal is to continue educating people. And she went right for campaign for tobacco free kids and said they don't want to hear anything about it. Oh. No. <sighs> Julie Casimiro, everybody. I mean, she's incredible. She's my new hero in Rhode Island. She actively talked to her constituents, saw vaping, saw adults vaping, changed her mind, went to, to the harm reduction route, wants to protect vaping in Rhode Island now for adults. And mm -hmm. not only that, but wants to continue educating people about vaping. And that might yes. include citizens constituents other representatives yes. other people within government yes. like this is one of those really small little i was telling eric it's like a drip tip of hope you know it's mm -hmm. just a little shorty 510 drip tip of hope and it's well, one it of is. those little tide churning things that i think is going to really start changing well exactly and the thing is you know if you're upset that your politician you know, whoever it is, doesn't understand or agree with you about vaping, but you've never tried to contact them as one of their constituents and tell them how you feel and tell them your story, then, I mean, there's not a whole heck of a lot to talk about, right? Yeah. Like they don't, they don't know. The people in Rhode Island, the consumers in Rhode Island and the business owners, and I want to make, uh, make it clear, I'm not trying to say Casaw takes credit for any of this. There were, I'm, I don't even know, I'm sure there was a call to action. I don't remember all that kind of stuff a while ago. But regardless, there were probably shop owners that got involved. Yep. There were business owners. Yep. Obviously, Mike Runchy did. Obviously, the White Horse Vapor. Like, this is all on the Rhode Island people. Mm -hmm. But they took the time to set up meetings, set up phone calls, and meet with their representative and talk with her and tell the, her story. their story. Yep. That is what can change people's minds. Yep. Just, you know, sitting around and yelling on Twitter while great and oftentimes therapeutic is not necessarily, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you need to make appointments with your legislators and sit down with them and be like, look, I know that you don't agree with this, but can I please tell you my story about this? Right. Can I please tell you how this has affected me? Cause I worry that you don't have all the information and mm -hmm. I really want you to know what happened to me, what mm -hmm. my story is. That's yeah. what makes people care. They see someone in front of them that has a perspective on this, experience with this, and that's what makes people care. That's why calls to action, whoever they come from, are you need to participate, like mm -hmm. Nick said. You know what I mean? We can put the calls to action out, but if you don't do them, that is the power of just them, useless. right? Yeah, all the power is with I, us. Right, because I can't power. save vaping for you. You know what I mean? We've talked about that before. You guys have to 
call. You have to make an effort to talk to these people, which I know as like a millennial talking on the phone is like, oh my God. But like, you still, you know <laughs> I what don't I mean? I like, like talking on the phone. I, nobody I likes talking on the phone nobody anymore, does. except for like boomers, I feel like. They're like, you want to yeah. call? I'm like, no, I don't. No, why Text would you me. call me? Why would Text you? What? I don't what you even hear your voice. Oh, it's weird. What? Like, yeah. I can't emoji you on the phone. Like, <laughs> I know it's weird. Fucking I get it. It's scary having to call people. I totally get I've it. I've done it. I, I do it. I write myself a little script because I know I'm going to get so nervous that I'm probably going to forget what to say. So I write yeah. a little script write and then I have it on my script. computer when I call. But if you don't take the time to do this, this like what happened with this legislator in Rhode Island cannot happen. I'm just yes. going to go ahead and put that if you're waiting for them to just wake up one morning and go, and go you know what science go wins shop. <laughs> right like you know it's not gonna happen science. you I forgot have, about to, that. Make you have to make it happen well and it's different you know and this comes back to it's different approaches and different tactics depending on which side of the aisle you're you know you're sort of reaching out to there's tried and true tactics and methodology that will work when you're talking to someone who holds conservative point of views, libertarian conservative point of views, there's certain talking points and with with democrats and you know there's a reason why they always call them like bleeding heart liberals it's because they are really touchy feely human emotionally you know this is like this whole facts versus emotions and facts don't care about your feelings and it's true facts don't care about your feelings but Democratic representatives absolutely fucking do. 100% that's all they care about. They are a very touchy-feely, emotional, tell me your story and let's sob together type of thing. And you can change people's minds. You can change their hearts with your story. It, it's really effective, really hyper-effective, really. And so that's what I would say. Tell your story. And this was, look, this was, Two people probably, Mikey and, and this this dude from uh, White Horse Vapor, who kind of changed her mind. It was just right. A, I think with the help of all of the people, other right, you like, know, consumers. Like, consumers yeah. got this ball rolling, put this bug in her ear, and like things fell together. Where she talked to constituents, she met with Mikey. Blah blah blah. Right. Now, hi, she's reversing the flavor ban that she voted for, and I don't care how you slice it. That's huge. Yes. That is huge and that gives yes. me uh look i said drip tips of hope other mm -hmm. other lawmakers other legislators they're really only an email away a phone call away to tell your uh to tell your story to so i'm taking this as a huge win and i loved reading this article great news i'll post the link down in the description to where you can read it some more in fact just follow alex norcia on twitter Follow yeah. Alex Norsey on Twitter, 100%. Yeah. Just do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's some big news out of Filter Magazine, Alex Norcia. Uh, I guess uh, moving on from that, I thought there was uh, one super chat from Jockey Boy. Jockey Boy. Uh, U.S. encourage or U.K. encouraging vaping. Do you know what else they have? Universal health care. It is in their best interests. Yeah. Um, it's interesting I was reading uh, the United States of America doesn't look great on the world stage right now. It just doesn't. I feel weird. We just look dumb, mostly. And I was reading some COVID travel restrictions for Europe for some reason. I don't know. You just ended up in some rabbit hole, right? I just started reading <laughs> stuff. And so I'm reading these European travel restrictions, and they're talking about they're actively telling their citizens in places like the Netherlands and Denmark and Germany, like avoid countries like the United States with poor health care. It's like if you're traveling to the United States and you get sick, try to come back to Germany as soon as possible because the health care in the U.S. sucks. Like they compared it to like a developing country's health care system. And I went, USA, USA, we're all going to die. <laughs> I mean, it's the really problem. Interesting. I think, I mean, I don't, they're not wrong, but they're also not right either. They're not the problem, right, but they're not The wrong. problem is the quality of care you get depends wholly on how rich you are and yeah. how much money you have. That's 100%. the problem. Yes. So There's if you are a traveling foreigner, 
coming to this country and getting sick. Nope. You're and you don't have any kind nope. of US medical insurance or any insurance that transfers to the United States in any way, you're going to wind up probably in the type of hospital that you maybe don't right. want to be in and may not it's, get the best it's, it's care in. The United States yeah, just it's, it's just pay to play. play. It's pay to play. There's a reason why Beyonce when she has a baby can clear a whole hospital floor just a whole wing regardless of who's in there who's sick who's giving birth nope beyonce is here to give her baby everybody out the entire floor was evacuated you know why money 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 it's pay to play so sucks if you get sick in the united states but uh and you don't have money. And you don't have money, yeah. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that super chat. And yet, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. The, the, the burden of smoking-related illnesses in the UK falls directly to the government. Yes. It doesn't fall to profiteering insurance companies or profiteering pharmaceutical companies or profiteering right. healthcare organizations. It right. falls solely to the government, and they don't want sick citizens. They want to cut costs. They want preventative cut care costs. cuts costs way better than a lot of other things. Too. Harm reduction cuts costs like you can't imagine. Uh, mm -hmm. Tribal Buddha, how you doing? Vape on my friend from a fellow bass player. A slap of the bass. All right. I haven't slapped of the bass in quite a while. I need to get up. Uh... You know, I was thinking about this in the shower today. If you want to take a, a sidetrack. Yeah, um, oh, let's do it. It's interesting because I was thinking on TBN days, on Tuesdays in the shower, all I do is go over like the show in my head. I think mm -hmm. about the news mm -hmm. and I think about how am I going to introduce it today? How, you know, mm -hmm. today I was like, maybe we're going to dance. Yeah. So I think about it and I'm thinking about like, man, I have been thinking about actively thinking about tobacco control for like eight years. Eight years of I've I've read so I've read more than I ever thought I possibly mm -hmm. would, and I'm looking back at this eight years, and I'm going, look, this is I wouldn't change this for the world. I love being a part of this movement. This is the hill I'm choosing to die on. Mm -hmm. Tobacco harm reduction needs to be safe, legal, and accessible everywhere. But then I think about these eight years, and I'm like, I could have learned how to play guitar in those eight years. I could have taken art classes. I could have taken calligraphy lessons. I could, like, I'm thinking of all this stuff. Like you could have probably gotten like two college degrees. I could have probably got two. I could have maybe played some video games every once in a while. Like it's weird looking back and going, Oh, I just gave up a completely normal life to be on YouTube and yell at tobacco controllers. Yep. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre, but I like it. Like I, on a Tuesday, I don't want to be anywhere else. I don't want to be anywhere else. You want to talk about uh, the World Health Organization a little bit? Ugh. Ugh, I know. I so, mean, are you asking me or are you yeah, asking let's me? Just get, <laughs> let's just <laughs> World Health Organization. No, but yes. No, but yes. No, but you kind of have to. Um, I know, but okay. I just want to say I like how mad the UK Vaping Industry Association is getting at the World Health Organization. And it's because... UCVA, UCVIA, UKVIA, the UK Vaping Industry Association, UCVIA, they have like the backing of the Royal College of Physicians, like they have the backing of Public Health England. So I'm just going to read this from the UK Vaping Industry Association. This is the same group in the UK doing Vapril. There you go. Oh, do I have the headline up? No. There it is. The World Health Organization risks becoming an enemy of harm reduction. So what we've been seeing with Bloomberg, the WHO, and Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids over the past like month has been great. Bloomberg might have broken some international laws, some domestic laws. He gave a bunch of money to the Philippines. And so now the Philippines FDA is having to hold themselves accountable for taking like foreign money. Mike Bloomberg, he's trying to, you know, ban vaping and campaign for tobacco free kids are trying to ban vaping. But now we have people, you know, going like we talked about last week in the philanthropy magazine, people like Mark Gunther, who are actively, you know, speaking out against Mike Bloomberg and the UK Vaping Industry Association actively speaking out against Mike Bloomberg. And it seems like it's coming to the point where every where they're kind of going, 
It's not cute anymore. Like you tried to ban vaping a few times and you didn't. And now you keep trying and look, it's just not cute anymore. Yeah. Now but we're getting pissed. Now we're kind of getting pissed off. The World Health Organization risks being labeled as an enemy of harm reduction if its inaccurate and unscientific treatment of vaping continues. It is increasingly out of touch with evidence on public health, and its credibility is now open to question. Damn right it is. Recent recommendations made by its study group on tobacco product regulations, which would prohibit electronic nicotine and non-nicotine delivery systems where the user can control device features and liquid ingredients, only exacerbates this problem. Yeah, World Health Organization has called for the prohibition and sale of electronic nicotine delivery systems that have a higher abuse liability than conventional cigarettes. For example, by controlling the rate or flux of nicotine. Mike Bloomberg really hates open container vape systems where you, the user, get to control the nicotine. He really, really hates it. And he takes he takes this, like saying that these products have a higher abuse liability is a really demeaning thing to say. He's basically saying, I think that you're too stupid to use this. Yeah. That's like basically you can't be what he's trusted saying. to you, pick your own stuff. Right. You can't be trusted. If you can't be trusted because he's coming at this with the assumption of if people can control the nicotine, then, oh, we're just a bunch of nicotine junkies and we're just going to put so much nicotine and we'll get all the nicotine we possibly can and we're just going to go crazy with nicotine. When reality is every vapor ever in the history of vaping attempts at least once to lower their nicotine Exactly. And then we'll successfully continue to lower their nicotine. Right. We, we, we self-regulate basically. We self, yeah. We self-administer, we self-regulate our own nicotine levels because you know, it's our body and we know how much nicotine we need to stay satisfied and not be on combustible tobacco cigarettes. We know that we can lower our nicotine over time, but essentially what Mike Bloomberg is saying is you're too dumb to self-administer your own nicotine. This has a higher abuse liability because you crazy nicotine addicts, you're just going to keep adding nicotine to it, and that raises the abuse liability. That's an insane. He must be. That's yeah. insane. He must be against like supermarkets and cooking at home too. Right. Like you crazy people are just going to add way too much salt to your own yeah. chili. You need government mandated <laughs> exactly. delivered meals exactly. in a box, but you well, can't add your own salt. To and it. it's not even that. Like he did this with sodas. Right, I was going to say, he's against sodas. refillable sodas he's against too, refillable right? sodas. With, oh, you know, we, from now too on, big. World Health Organization, abuse liability on cakes. You people are adding too much sugar to your cakes because yep. you're a bunch yep. of sugar crazy people. Can't, can't make them at home. You can't make you them at home anymore because you add too much cake. sugar. Government yeah. issued cakes. Fuck, yep. that's dystopian. I mean, that's uh, dystopian that's, as hell. That's how I view Mike Bloomberg. He thinks that the government needs to, he is the ultimate like nanny state person. Ultimate, ultimate. He thinks that like only he and like the government know best and that you shouldn't be able to do anything in your own life or have any autonomy because you'll just fuck it up. So he can, he should just control it for you. Yeah, he should, ju exactly. He should just control it for you. John Dune, director of the Ukvia says that the World Health Organization poses a real threat to smoking cessation and harm reduction in the UK. While the WHO is scheduled to hold its critical summit on vaping in November 2021, known as COP9. What is COP? COP9. Mm -hmm, I've heard of it before. I, what does COP stand for, though? Cigarettes? Mm. Put me on the spot, are you? Yeah, fact checker. I don't know what COP9. It just seems like a weird... Thing. It seems like a weird, like, deep state thing to call. It's like Operation COP9. I mean, give just me Just sounds sec. fishy. Just sounds fishy. But this is their apparently critical summit on vaping, November 2021. It continues to find itself at odds with health and, health and industry advocates. Certain World Health Organization positions are, so, are now so out of date and so thoroughly refuted by the experts that they may as well be saying that the earth is flat. They deviate dramatically from leading experts, including Public Health England and Smoking on Action and Health. Take, for example, vaping helping people to quit smoking. 
The World Health Organization says there is little evidence. As of early 2019, clinical trials were finding that vaping is almost twice as effective as any NRT on the market. And the World Health Organization continues to say there's little evidence. How much evidence will be enough for the World Health Organization? I found it. We may never know. Oh, what's COP9? Conference of the Parties. Oh, nothing weird about that. I mean. Conference of the Parties 9? And 9 is the the, the ninth iteration. Yeah. It's the ninth Conference meeting. of the Parties. That just sounds, yeah. I, that just sounds George Orwellian to me. Conference yeah, of conference the parties? Of parties. All right. Well, here we go. Brave new world. Um, just this month, Public Health England found its Vaping Evidence Review 2021 that smoking quit rates involving a vaping product were higher than with any other method in every single English region. For the World Health Organization to hold such contrary views is either bad science or bad faith. Both risk it becoming an enemy of harm reduction. Uh, Dune added vaping success as an industry and its potential for public health improvements uh, is built on empowering personal choice. Yes, these are consumer products. Different systems, styles, and flavors give consumers the options they need to leave combustible cigarettes behind. I would urge the World Health Organization to engage with vapors, to hear their stories, and discover the life-changing decisions they've made in their lives. Prohibition is simply not the answer. And that is just, I, and like, I don't know uh, Dune, John Dune here from uh, Akvia, but just that like really timid, I would urge the World Health Organization to meet with vapors. Never going to happen. It's just right. not. You can urge it all you want. It's just not going to happen. And it's like, you couldn't, it's like a speeding train is coming at you and you just go, I would urge this speeding train to slow down before it annihilates me into just blood and vapor. It's just not going to happen. I would love for the World Health Organization to engage with vapors, but I don't think urging is going to be enough for the World Health Organization. I think it's going to have to come down to like, do uh, someone's going to have to like drop the hammer on the World Health Organization. I'd love it to be Public Health England. I mean... I, yeah, I don't like, know what's oh, going to have to happen to urge. I would urge you. Okay. Change them. I don't know. I would encourage, urge the World Health Organization as well to engage with vapors. Um, he wraps this up by saying the UK, now this is great. The UK will send a delegation to the World Health Organization COP9 summit later this year for the first time since leaving the European Union in what many hope will be an opportunity to promote harm reduction. The UCVIA was among expert guests invited by the all-party parliamentary group for vaping to advise on the COP9 delegation's approach. Dune, who joined the parliaments for its February evidence session, concluded, the UK has a genuine opportunity to promote harm reduction as a valid progressive strategy for public health on the world stage. We must not yeah. allow misinformation to undermine this potential irrespective of the source. Okay, that's yeah. that's damn good. That's yeah. damn good. Get them, UK. Get them. Go get them. Get them, UK. Get them. And listen, like, the, he is basically, I mean, as a, as a THR nerd, it really excites me that he's like, we have an opportunity to promote harm reduction on the world stage and we can't yeah. allow misinformation to undermine this potential. Like, God, that's such a great statement. God, I wish I lived in the UK. Okay. Can I sew them a cape? Can, can I do it? I, can I they need sew like the, them those fancy cape. robes that boxers have when they come down, yeah, you know, satin the robes. whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Let's play the music. You mm. get in there and yeah. you tell them. You yeah. tell them at you that top them. nine. Top nine. <laughs> it sounds weird, cop, cop nine. nine. Cop like nine. It sounds like a, a spinoff of NCIS on. <laughs> CBS. I know. <laughs> NCIS, COP9. Nine. Nine. <laughs> the World Health Organization's continued negativity on vaping comes as the UK's government's own consultation on smoking regulations draws to a close on the 19th of March. 
The UK VIA's consultation response, Blueprint for a Better Regulation, is to be published shortly, which calls for the UK's progressive approach to be defended and expanded. Defend it and expand it. Yeah, I love do it. it. I love how upset Ukvia is getting at Mike Bloomberg. I love how upset all of England, like all of the UK is getting at the World Health Organization. Yeah. Ash yeah. is mad at them. PHE is mad at them. Martin Dockrell is mad at them. And you don't want Martin Dockrell mad at you. You just don't. <laughs> I feel like we've been the only ones mad at them for so long. I'm like, so friends, friends, I know, friends, finally. come over. Let's yes, friends, countrymen, yes. Let's all be unanimously Let me your against, anger. <laughs> unanimously united against Mike Bloomberg and the World Health Organization because they risk becoming an enemy of harm reduction. I feel like becoming is being a little bit generous. They are pretty yeah, well yeah, cemented as an enemy of harm reduction. I don't think I've ever heard the term harm reduction or anything come out of Mike Bloomberg's mouth. All he does is want to ban and prohibit and that's it. That's it. That's wait, what it is. Wait a minute. That's what Okay. It is. Ian Covenant in chat mm -hmm. says COP9 SVU special vapors unit. <laughs> I could not let that go by without reading it. That is is ep well done. Holy well crap. done. Yeah, we got it. There you go. Special. <laughs> I also love SVU, so that extra Great. resonates with me. I'm into I it. I feel like really there. Good. I feel like there's a potential like comedic skit or something involved here. Like we could do a fake Law and Order special vapors units like comedy routine. I feel like that. <laughs> I feel like there's some potential for maybe someone more talented than myself, but I mean, the potential I don't know, man. is there. <laughs> I, I see it. I see it. The potential is there. Um, before we wrap up with some sciencey stuff, there was this really great article uh, written by Jacob Greer, "A Smoke-Filled Room of One's Own," and even that title, it's like, oh. This deep and meaningful type of mm -hmm. your own mm -hmm. internal smoking room and things like this. And really what it is, is a, it's a spectacular article essentially talking about all of the bad decisions we made and all of the bad science we used to completely marginalize smokers to the point where they just might as well not even exist. Second class citizens, right? He's, it says he's written for tobacco policy for more than a decade, and he covers like this uh, ratcheting effect that happens. And there was one part that I really wanted to share, um, and this is long, and I can't possibly sit and read this whole thing. Too many large words, Jacob Greer, too many large words. But there is one part of this that I wanted to share. Yeah, the slippery slope. This is my favorite thing because you can draw some parallels to this, to vaping. He says, sliding down the slippery slope. When the movement for indoor smoking bans gathered momentum in the early 2000s, activists dismissed concerns about a slippery slope. Smokers warned that they might someday be banished from patios, park benches, college campuses, golf courses, beaches, sidewalks, parking lots, or even their own homes. But... They were ridiculed as unrealistic doomsayers. Today, these are all common policies. As anyone searching for a spot to light up can attest, the slope turned out to be pretty damn slippery after all. This is the argument. The slippery slope fallacy is something that tobacco control just loves. And this is what we were talking about earlier with the yes. flavor ban, nicotine caps. If they pass a 20 milligram nicotine cap, what's to stop them from going... 20 is too high. 10. Literally 10 is too nothing. high. One nothing milligram. is going to stop. Nothing. Them. And when you say concerns about that, you go, well, if you put this nicotine cap in place, you know, we have, we're the smokers in this situation saying, hey, this is a real slippery slope. You right. just keep taking. You just keep taking. The smokers found out the hard way in the 2000s that, yeah, the slope is pretty damned, pretty damn slippery. And yep. it's one of those things I saw Neferon pointed out in chat multiple times. If you give them an inch, they will take a mile. And it, or 500. Or 500 miles. 
And uh, I would walk 500 miles and uh, I would walk f- f- finger dancing. Okay. That's how I dance, you guys. I use fingers. It's a, it's a perfectly acceptable way to get down. It's a perfectly acceptable like way to boogie. And so uh, this is really, I can't recommend this enough. Um, Jacob Greer wrote this book, The Rediscovery yes. of Tobacco. Did Have you read yep. this? I haven't read this I, yet. Okay. I have it like you and I have I not have read it yet. But I do own it. I own it. And I feel good yes. about owning it. I feel like that's a good first good step, about, right? I will like, read it. Jacob I Gr- swear. Yeah. <laughs> See, here, I have a little bit of bragging rights, although it makes me feel worse for not reading it. He signed mine. Hope you enjoy Aww. the book, Jacob Greer. And I was like, ooh, Jacob Greer. Fancy. That's like a big deal. And I like it. And I, I value this book. Uh, I, I am going to read it. We need I to form a book club. It. To like keep to each read. other responsible, you know, to hold book. each other. Res- like we need to get through chapter two by Tuesday because we yep. have to talk about it at book club. The rediscovery. Logan exhales came up with this idea a while ago, and I was like, Logan, this of is the, the only way club? I'm going to read anything. Yeah, do yeah. the book club. That is a smart idea. That's it's a smart right? idea. Logan's probably already read this book twice. Oh, oh like he's forty got, times. Yeah, he's got sentences tattooed on him already. Uh, yeah, for he's sure. Really into it. So uh, he, he's a Jacob Greer is a subject matter expert. And one of the things that I wanted to touch on that he touches on a little bit, and we have danced around this subject, I don't know, maybe a little bit, and this isn't exactly going to be a deep dive into it, but the bad science that we based smoking bans on was really very bad. And this is real bad. And it's hard looking at the secondhand smoking data and science, it makes me feel like I'd imagine Stanton Glantz feels because you go your whole life thinking and hearing secondhand smoke gives you lung cancer. Secondhand smoke gives you lung cancer. Mm -hmm. I heard that at least a trillion times in my life. Secondhand smoke gives you lung cancer. Secondhand smoke gives you lung cancer. He links in this to a study where they say there's no clear link between passive smoking and lung cancer. And this is something that I was aware of years ago, years and years and years ago, but we used really bad science to marginalize smokers and pass a lot of clean indoor sort of bills that was based on, look, based on, I mean, basically nothing. (laughs) Based on essentially nothing. And if you need more evidence, uh, the the modern smoking bans that exist now, Stanton Glantz's research had everything to do with how that started. Yep. And you guys know already about the quality of Stanton's research, okay? Yeah. One could draw a line nearly single-handedly giving him credit for the smoking bans in the early 2000s that ripped across the country. Yep. Stanton had a lot to do with that. And you remember remember the heart attack study with vaping? Remember that whole thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one, this one's worse. This The study that launched all of this, worse. <laughs> worse. And yeah. this is the big thing. And so this is a really long article piece that I'm not gonna do. Um, but the, the, one of the authors of it, Joy T. Patel, MD, she says, we don't want people to conclude that passive smoking has no effect on lung cancer. We think the messaging is that this, analyst, this analysis doesn't tell us what the risk is or even if there is a risk. And so like that's a big thing to say is that there's no clear link between passive smoking and cancer. That doesn't mean to say there's not a clear link between passive smoking, what they call passive smoking, which is secondhand, thirdhand smoke and right. other health disparities, you know, upper right. respiratory it's not good for infections. It's really not good for it's you. It's not good but, for you. But the idea that secondhand smoke causes lung cancer is based in nonsense. And that's a hard thing to hear because you hear it your whole life. And so this is what, this is my Stanton Glantz connection. This is how I imagine Stanton Glantz feels when people say that vaping, you know, will say positive things about vaping and nicotine because his whole life he's been entrenched in this one view. And to have that like uprooted a little bit, it's a shock to the system. It's a little bit jarring, you know? 
It's like when you hear that uh, George Washington didn't have wooden teeth. Oh, what did he have? Oh, well, he had fake dangers, mostly made of teeth from slaves. And you kind of go, oh, my God. Like it changes your whole. Yeah. Like you thought this one thing your whole life. George Washington yep. had wooden teeth. And to suddenly be uprooted from that, it's a, it's a little bit of a shock to the system. So this idea that secondhand smoke causes lung cancer, causes it, is not a thing. No. It's just not a thing. And you kind of have to wrap your head around that however however you can but it's kind of just not a thing there's that doesn't no, mean it's safe it doesn't mean it's safe that uh, absolutely right that doesn't mean it's safe there are a whole host of bad things that happen to your body when you inhale smoke secondhand smoke standing by a campfire upper respiratory issues sure. you know bronchial issues there's all sorts of bad things that can happen but the but risks related to cancer, cancer right, have been overblown. Completely, completely overblown. Crazily, insanely completely overblown. And this is one of those things like I say I follow science. I, I want to follow the science and I want to follow the correct science. And literally everything I can find about secondhand smoking, all of, these, all of this was based on essentially nothing, essentially zero. There's zero evidence okay showing that passive smoking can cause lung cancer. Right. But it's just one of those things that we accept because it's been it's been go it's, you know, it's been said so for many so times. long. It's like the, right. the youth vaping epidemic. Sure. We just keep hearing it over and over and over again. And so you it hear must it, be true. Yeah, so absolutely. So it must be true, right? Yeah, I mean Stanton's study in Helena, Montana, which started all of the, you know, smoking bans in the 2000s, basically mm -hmm. what he did was a small town passed a public smoking ban, I think it was restaurants, something like that. And Stanton watched the city after they'd done that mm -hmm. and saw a decrease in the rate of heart attacks. And decided that smoking bans reduce heart attacks. Mm. Just, oh. just decided. Okay, just, they did this, That's and this happened. So those must be really that must be a causal relationship, right? And so that research went out, and everybody was like, "Oh my god, ban it everywhere!" And they yep. did. And then a f lot of researchers came through later and were like, "Wait, what? Really?" And they tried to do repeat replicate this study right. on larger scale, smaller scale, never able to replicate the results ever again. At all. Ever. Ever. Those two things, it was a coincidence. Is the long, long, you know, TLDR, that was a coincidence. They were not related to each other. It was a fluke. And Stanton used that to do some to, public yeah, smoking ban across a across the country. the country perpetuated across the country right and they came back after and they were like actually this is false actually this is not causal actually yep. and everybody was like yeah but uh we don't really care it's fine we're it, you know it's fine. they they didn't nobody cared that everything that they'd been basing all this policy off was wrong they <laughs> did not care nope didn't care didn't care and don't seem to care to try to correct it in any capacity because no. mission accomplished their smoking bans now why would they go back and attempt to rectify the wrongs that they that they put on you know adult smokers and continually you know marginalize them and, you know, it's like Jacob Greer said, it's a slippery slope. They were worried. They said, we're not going to be able to smoke in our own houses soon. And they said, oh, no, you're crazy. It would never go that far. Oh, yes, it did. Hi, welcome to 2021. You can't smoke in your own car. I saw Eve in the chat. I appreciate you being here. Uh, you can't you can't smoke in drive throughs now, but they have no issue with you idling your combustion engine for however long it takes that kid to make your burger. Yeah. You can sit in a drive through with your windows down, inhaling carbon monoxide from an internal uh -huh. combustion engine. Fine. Uh -huh. But if you sat uh -huh. in that same car with the windows down and lit up a cigarette, oh, that is suddenly illegal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what? What? What is happening in the world? Follow the science. And at this point, it's useless to try to put any information out there about passive smoking and lung cancer. It oh, is a, no. It you is start futile. talking about that and futile. people think you are crazy. Futile. Futile, right? Futile. But it's based on science. It's based in 
It's based in science. I'll post a link down in the description to where you can read this exact study of no clear link between passive smoking and lung cancer. It might open your eyes up a little bit, might open your brain up a little bit. I don't know. Kind of, I mean, I first heard about the secondhand smoking thing, like I think it was in 2000 or 2001, something like that. I had heard about all of this bad science from smoking bans because Nevada was, uh, Levada was one of the last holdouts of smoking indoors um, for a really long time. I could go to my sports bar down the street and just smoke inside all, all over the place. Mm-hmm. Nevada mm-hmm. was really like, yeah, fucking smoke. Who cares? Smoke wherever you want. But when the legislation came down about prohibiting smoking in all indoor locations, there was kind of a big hubbub about it. And I remember reading opinion pieces in the news and things like this about the bad science that we base smoking bans on. And that kind of sent me down a path of like, whoa, I might need to start questioning literally everything I know and literally everything that anybody tells me. Because once you it's hear true. something a thousand times, you kind of go, yes, I, okay. Yeah. Everyone's they, saying it, so it has to be true. Right? It, there must be a youth vaping epidemic. Secondhand right. smoke must cause lung cancer, even though it doesn't. And even though there's no vaping epidemic, it's it's tough to be a a a critically thinking person in the world today. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Especially with tobacco control. And I put a link in chat to, um, I actually just realized at this. So I was first introduced to this topic when I was doing, uh, I think it was research for one of my truth about vaping videos. And I found this article that I just realized was by Jacob called. We use terrible science to justify Ah, smoking ban. Was that a Jacob? Yeah, that is Jacob. And I had I just realized that right now. I was like, oh, my God, it's like full circle, bro. It's like, you know, yep. um, but this article talks about the Stanton glance you know, involvement. It talks about, you know, the, the uh, scientific research that Nick was talking about. Mm-hmm. This is a really interesting article. If you want to take the red pill about secondhand smoke and smoking bans, you guys yep. like that is the bad. He should have called this like the red pill about. I know. Well, it's like that. Red, it's like the term even red pill has such a weird connotation now to it. It's like, OK, I'll be red pilled about tobacco control. But that doesn't mean I'm like waiting on 8chan for the QAnon drops. Like there's yeah, a no, huge no, 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 no. there's a big difference. Are you watching? There. Are you watching that documentary, by the way, oh, on yeah, HBO? Yeah, it's great. It's oh. great. Oh my God. I saw it happen. I was on 8chan. I saw it. No, you were not. Lies. Of course. I dude, I've been on 4chan since 1991, what? I think. I don't even go on Reddit. What? I I grew up with the internet. Like I first got the internet when I was 14, I think, and it was probably 1996 or something I first discovered 4chan, and I have been an oh I've been going God. to 4chan, I mean, weekly, sometimes daily. 8chan too? Yeah, 8chan, 4chan, 12chan, 7chan, there's a bunch of chans. Yeah, but there's... Okay, anyway, we could talk about It's the later. worst place on the internet. Like, don't I was gonna go say there. It. it instantly, like, it instantly made me sick to my stomach. It instantly... I saw things that I wish I could unsee, right? And it desensitized me greatly to, like, a lot of things. I, I credit 4chan with really fucking up my brain, I guess. But you should um, go, like, check it out if you're interested. It's like... HN's great. It's... You know, it's like the documentary says. It's like pure freedom of speech. Pure. Pure and unadulterated freedom of speech. lots of white supremacy. Of a lot like. of white supremacy, but really, like, it's all split up into different forums. It's like you can't right. say that Reddit's full of liberals because, well, there's some liberal subreddits, but there's also the parlor subreddit, the conservative subreddit that I subscribe to. There's a few, you know, you can get balance anywhere. I see. And okay. 4chan and 8chan is mostly just anarchy. Oh, okay. All it's right. it's yeah, like I'm not, I'm not it's it's, it's 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 an exercise in internet anarchy, is what it is, and it's pretty great, you know. No, no, thank you. It's interesting if you're interested in the human condition and like the way people think and say things. The chans are are wonderful because everybody's anonymous, so nobody holds back. Nobody holds oh, back yeah. anything. So you get. If you uh, ever wanted to know what society really thinks? Yeah. Oh yeah. Or at I least mean, the underbelly. Really. really. But they have their own, like 4chan has its own news and political forums as well. It's, it's interesting. If you've never mm-hmm. been, I would suggest it. At least go look around. Anyway. Pa- hard pass. Hard, hard pass. pass. Hard pass on the chance. Okay. Hard um, pass on the chance. Let's start wrapping this nonsense up with some... Uh, Nick Guy the Science Man. Or should I need to do a new bumper for that. 
Oh, maybe we'll just keep using Nick Guy the Science Man. I mean, it's That's adorably not, cheesy. It is so cheesy. It's too cheesy. Too it's cheesy. It's adorable. <laughs> Nick, Guy. Nick Guy the Science Man. That was from, I made that in like 2018, I think. 2016. Yeah. I, th- I don't even remember how old that is. Crazy old. But we're going to end this here TBN stream today by talking about some science. We've got some sciencey things to talk about, uh, including this study. Vape aerosol has minimal impact on gene expression in human lung tissue compared to cigarette smoke. This is a real interesting. Uh, this is a real interesting study. This comes to us from Science Tech Daily, which doesn't look like it's the most super reputable science website that exists. It looks like. Uh, I mean, it's a WordPress sort of blog style news site Mm -hmm. best science and news technology since 1998 it's fine vape aerosol has minimal impact so a new peer-reviewed i know there's some scientists out there on twitter like that guy who was defending stanton glance the other day who are only concerned with peer-reviewed studies no anecdotes no this Uh. no that only peer-reviewed studies. So I go, okay, well, let's try to find as many peer-reviewed studies as we can for this guy. Peer-reviewed study in the journal Toxological Research and Application shows acute exposure of a 3D human bronchial tissue model to cigarette aerosol has minimal impact on gene expression compared to smoke from combustible cigarettes. So essentially what the researchers did in this study was expose bronchial cells to cigarette smoke and then they expose mm-hmm. bronchial cells to uh, vapor from e-liquid. Mm-hmm. What happened? Well, when they exposed the cells to cigarette smoke, nothing happened. For four, they said for four hours, nothing happened. 48 hours later, the cells that were exposed to cigarette smoke uh, activated their death pathways and basically were like, okay, we're going to die now. We, we started the process. We're dying because of the cigarette smoke. These cells are, are dying. E-liquid uh, vapor on the same cells. Well, they started off the same. Four hours, no changes. And then at 48 hours, still no changes. The, the cells didn't start their death pathways. They didn't activate their death pathways. And uh, no, no, no cells died. 48 hours. Does it really exposure. say death pathways? I'm trying yeah. to find that. Yeah. Focusing on, uh, it says uh, 48 hours, the cells had both genes associated with the cell cycle and cell death pathways activated. Gotcha. Conversely, those cells exposed to vape aerosol demonstrated highly elevated NF kappa B signaling pathways after four hours exposure. However, at 48 hours, no pathways were activated. So it went back to normal. So basically. it went went straight back to normal. Straight back to normal. Okay. Didn't kill any cells. And this is interesting because there have been other studies like this, except if you've paid attention to them, they poured e-liquid right. on the cells right. yep. as opposed to, and it's like. I remember they did that. No with one like was a, pouring e-liquid into their sh- lungs. Well, didn't they do this with, wasn't I reading one about like shark embryos? They had shark embryos mm-hmm. that they were pouring e-liquid on. And when these shark embryos died, they're like, look how bad vaping is. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, geez, good luck. They've you done it. dish soap on there. The, so, the shark embryos gonna are going to die. You right, lunatics? exactly. You Unbelievable. Don't- Put dish soap in your lungs. You also don't put straight e-liquid in your in lungs. In your lungs. What's interesting about this particular science, as it were, is this science was done by Imperial. We know who Imperial is. Oh, uh-huh. Imperial. Tobacco company. Tobacco. They are a British tobacco company. Mm-hmm. And this was done by uh, the head of their heated, the head of their tobacco harm reduction science at Imperial, mm-hmm. Dr. Grant O'Connell. And it, it kind of, I read this whole article, and as soon as I got to that word Imperial, it shifted it a little bit in my head. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that, and, 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 and I, you know, I, t- I was aware of that, and I thought, why did that shift my head a little bit? It's because Imperial is a tobacco company, and I've been conditioned 
by yep. media and politicians that if there's good science or something that comes from a bad organization or a previously bad organization, your initial reaction is to kind of discredit it. You go, oh, well, mm -hmm. that was a tobacco study. That holds yeah. no validity. That holds no validity, right? But the science is the science, regardless of who does it or where the money came from. The cells don't know that the money came from imperial brands. The cells right. if just the methodology don't die. is sound. Right. Yeah. If the right. methodology is sound. So it's just one of those interesting things. This is real good vape science that was funded and put out by Imperial a Tobacco, tobacco company. company. Which is why it's not going to get any traction anywhere. Which is why at all. I know, which is why I have to mention it here because it will never right. go anywhere else. No. No, but yeah, uh, they say at the end of this, uh, you know, this latest research adds to the ever growing body of evidence, you know, gathered by both Imperial brands and other organizations demonstrating the considerable harm reduction potential of next generation vaping products. Yes, but it came from tobacco. You so know, I've tobacco. actually people smarter than me have made the okay. argument that there basically there's an argument to be made that says that industry funded research for example like tobacco industry research like this actually has a much higher standard than standard like academic research right. because they know how much increased scrutiny they're going to be under yep. so yep. they you know go extra 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 to make sure that everything is basically flawless yep. so there's an argument i'm not saying that you you know Anybody's science can be flawed, you guys. Mm -hmm. Tobacco company, campaign for tobacco free kids. It doesn't match Stanford University. It doesn't, any, he could be wrong. Any, sure. Anybody's study can be flawed because of the methodology and real world, you know, uh, how it works in the real world, basically, and whether or not any of this has any implication on what actually happens in the human body, right? right. Like, this is a very comp. Science is super hard is really what I'm trying hard. to tell you. <laughs> yes. Science is very hard. And it, while funding does matter, it definitely can matter. I would say that methodology and how it, you know, uh, how it pertains to real world exposure matters, I would say, more yeah, than yeah. funding does in most cases. Uh, yes, I yes, I would say that. I would also Yes, I was trying to collect a thought there. I would also say Yeah. I mean I would also Can you 100% say, trust tobacco companies? No, no. You can't. But the Are science they, that they do is know? science. It it is science and it's hard because the science is the science. I don't know. I, I have this thought in my head that I'm trying to get out and I can't. The science is kind of the science no matter what, if it's imperial or if it came from what I think is really the most critical component to it is the presentation of it. Because you can take data that shows something or suggests something and you can take that data and you can present it like Scott Gottlieb did and say, oh, there's a youth vaping epidemic. Well, can we see the study? No. Can we see the data? No. Okay. Is that more or less disingenuous than a tobacco company doing vape studies and actually reporting the truth? Like they didn't hide this anywhere. Imperial brands didn't go, oh, we did this study. And, you know, they're not hiding it. They're saying, here, look, here it is. We got nothing to hide. Here's all of yeah. our science. We, there's no, our products, our, our product, traditional products are more bad. Our traditional than the products new stuff. are way bad, and these new ones are much, much better. And people still refuse just because of that, like little, yeah, that little tobacco connotation. Man, it bums me. I out. was thinking, I was thinking about this honestly in the shower today. You had your shower thoughts earlier. See, my shower, shower thoughts. thoughts, my shower thoughts today were actually about big tobacco. They were about like the nuance and like our attitudes towards them, vapors' attitudes toward them, science, public health attitude. Yeah. Like, and the conclusion that I came to in my mind is that like, you guys, th this situation is not the kindergarten playground. There aren't right. best friends that you do everything with and mortal enemies <laughs> that anything they do is awful. Like, yes. that's not real. 
the reality of the situation is that sometimes tobacco companies are going to do good things or spend money on good things. Like and sometimes, all companies, right? Right. And all sometimes companies. they're going to support bad things and do bad things. And, and just because they do this doesn't mean they won't do this. And just because right. they do this doesn't mean they can't do this. And none of it, like, it's not, you can't put people in boxes and right. then be like, this is how the world is. Yes. It's just not it's like, just that's not. not how it works. Well, the There's same thing, so much. The same thing goes for CDC, right? They just because right. they botched the Evoli investigation, Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that everything else they've done is garbage. Some of the right. stuff probably is. Some of the stuff probably isn't. Like with all things, you know, right. there, there's this, there's a, there's a balance to it. And people can, yeah, people can choose to be disingenuous or choose to present things in a smarmy kind of shady way that's not in line with the science. <sighs> It, I say bring it on. I say, yeah, you can't put people in a box. The world is complicated. No. And look, this to me, to me, Imperial Tobacco, PMI, Philip Morris, Altria, whatever, the biggest of the big tobacco companies, just the fact that right now they're having the conversation of pivoting from combustion to something else, that speaks volumes to how well vaping works and how yeah. like how well people are going to the biggest uh, this would have been unheard of 10 years ago yes big tobacco stopping selling cigarettes vaping did that vaping yeah, they has forced already it. yeah we yeah mostly forced, forced it. it the consumers right? like, went, we like smoking? this more Right. Like Smoking more. rates have gotten so low that Big Tobacco, who is not stupid, nope. is going, well, there's not really a future here. Because A, a lot of our consumers die. Right. And B, <laughs> a lot of them are choosing a safer. I mean, it's real. You guys, you think they don't know this? You think that, you know, a certain percentage of their oh, customers die because they know, they know. Okay. They know. They know. Let's not be oh. silly. So A, oh, the product. Know doesn't make you live longer and might make you live short less live long less and b a bunch of them are switching to other alternatives so big tobacco is losing money steadily over time Hand right over big tobacco is smart and they're like well shit guys yeah we should probably pivot to something maybe like the reduced harm products that our old customers are now switching to and it doesn't kill them. They'll live longer, so they'll buy our products for longer. <laughs> exactly. Like, do you see how this yep. works? It's not them being sentimental necessarily. I'm not. I'm not sitting here thinking like they're the Grinch that's heart grew like four sizes. No, they're like they're a this is better than this, and yeah. I trust that. Honestly, I trust that better than trusting that they've had a change of heart. You yes. know what I mean? If, Absolutely. If Altria it's an is always to gonna. Right. If Altria is always going to follow the money, no matter what, okay, I know what to do with that. You know what I mean? If the money goes this way, they're going to go that way. I trust that. And that, I think, is what they're all seeing now is harm reduction is the way to go. Yes. That doesn't make them, you know, all amazing, great people. It just means that it makes sense and it's predictable. And that to a certain extent, as much as it affects them and their bottom line, you can kind of predict what they're going to do. It's not difficult to predict what they're going to do. And hopefully what they're going to do is stop selling cigarettes and sell vapor products. Could you, I mean, think like 10 years, five years into the future. I could see mm -hmm. five years into the future that cigarettes like combustion is like such a niche thing. There's no mass produced cigarettes anymore. There's like maybe some specialty tobacco like shops roll your or cigar own shops or sure, roll your own. Mm -hmm. I legitimately think, and it's not because... I want to ban combustion or I want to ban cigarettes. I just think that the consumers are going to go to that. It's like you can't keep propping open a blockbuster video when everybody's on Netflix. Yeah, like you exactly. just can't. We're all going that's to vaping. The, that's the ideal situation, right? That people, if they are the type of person who is going to experiment with this sort of stuff, that they go for vaping instead of cigarettes and that they either you know, maybe they like that and they like nicotine and they use nicotine that way. Or they're like, you know what? I'm not really into this. It's boring. I tried it. The end. And yeah. then they go on to not be a non-vapor, non-smoker, whatever. I think that that is a much better universe that we could all live in. 
And then, like you said, it's not that we ban smoking. It's not sure. that we ban cigarettes. It's that choice. They stop making the companies that produce them stop making them because there's not enough demand for that product. That mm-hmm. to me would be the ultimate yay scenario. Ultimate yay scenario. I mean, that's a pretty ultimate yay scenario, but yeah, I definitely, and I don't think that's completely out of the realm of possibility. I don't think so either. I do not think so. All right. Well, let's do one last science-y thing here. Um, oh, I, I thought this, one. this one's, this one's really interesting. So this is, this deals with, let me see if real quick, if there were any more uh, super chats that happened in there. Tanker monkey. I had one says a uh, new North Dakota tobacco ad says tobacco is sacred to native Americans, but vaping and chew are not. Oh, that's uh, that's I mean, that's an interesting that's true. marketing take to take. Yeah. I mean, it is true. It is. It is. It is true. Vaping and chew are not. Okay. I mean, that's interesting. Uh, Lee, very gracious of you. I sent you the minutes of the UK reduced risk proposal in the mail to you. It's worth a look to peep it. Oh, okay. Absolutely, Lee. Thank you for that. Uh, I will definitely check that out. I appreciate that very much. Um, So science, last little bit of science here. Now, this is going to delve into questionable math, uh, some questionable numbers going on there when we started comparing these numbers to the, to the CDC numbers and data. But the big, uh, the big headline on this study is uh, inability to recruit adolescents for a vaping cessation clinical trial within a large pediatric health system. So what these researchers set out to do was to have a trial, like a clinical trial of youth's that are regular vapors, and this would be a trial to get them off of vaping, right? It's like a vaping cessation trial. Right. And all they needed to do was gather up all of these youth vapors that we keep Uh hearing about Uh and then uh, put them through this clinical trial, right? They needed a certain amount of youths in order for this to be a successful trial. And when you title it, inability to recruit adolescents for a vaping cessation clinical trial, my ears just kind of went, wait, what? Mm -hmm. It starts off and it says e-cigarettes among adolescents is an epidemic. E-cigarette use, it's an epidemic, putting children at risk for significant harm. E-cigarettes are the most commonly used tobacco product among youth with over 20% of high school students reporting current use. Harmful toxicants and known carcinogens are found in the emissions and the bodies of e-cigarette users. The great thing is they link to where that came from, but the study that they linked to didn't come to that conclusion. Didn't come Funny that how that works. Yeah, it was real bizarre. They said, oh, yeah, carcinogens, harmful emissions. Here's the study that shows it. And then when you go to that study, it's like, well, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't show that. So we, we hear this, right? Epidemic, 20% mm-hmm. of high school students. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it turns out. Can we just jump to the implications paragraph? I'm jump I straight love to the it implications so paragraph. So much. Turns out, despite access, so this is their reasoning, despite access to 93,000 adolescents and use of an integrated system for identifying and referring adolescent e cigarette users, this was a failed feasibility pilot study. Only 2.4% of adolescents reported any e-cigarette or tobacco use, a stark contrast with the rates from school-based national estimates. Hmm, that's how how peculiar. Based on this analysis, adding e-cigarette screening prompts into the electronic health record for routine visit documentation templates alone might not be enough, may not identify youth e-cigarette users. Even in clinical practices that ensured privacy and confidentiality, meaning e-cigarette use questions were asked confidently by the trusted provider in private without the parent present, does not yield e-cigarette use rates reported elsewhere. What? What are they saying right here, Danielle Jones? It seems to me like they're saying that adolescents aren't vaping at the rate that we're being told that they're vaping at. Is that what I'm gleaning from this? (laughs) 
Here's the intro, and again, this is this is there's some speculation on my part about some what's going on here. Yeah. Because here's their version of what's happening. These researchers are saying that teenagers are lying about their right. vaping use yes. so that so that it doesn't the numbers don't match up, right? right? Because they've got healthcare providers and doctors asking these kids in private, Art, do you vape? And then they've got the National Youth Tobacco Survey data, which I'm gonna go ahead and point out here real quick. Mm-hmm. So the National mm-hmm. Youth Tobacco Survey uses a sample size of students. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they they take surveys from anywhere from like around, you know, 12 to 15,000 all the way up to like 20,000, I believe students. So that's how many actually fill this survey out, the National Youth Tobacco Survey. And then they take that data and they, you know, extrapolate it to across the entire country, right? So that's how you get how many millions of kids are vaping. It's not because they asked that those numbers of millions of kids. It's because they did fancy math and they were like, okay, in this sample size, this percentage did it. So that means of the whole country, that's this how many, many are people doing must it. be doing it. Right, right, right. That's what that means. This little study here had a much larger, what you would call sample size. Much they had larger. over 93,000. I think at the most, the CDC stuff has had like 20, maybe 22,000, something maybe. like that. Yeah, maybe. So it's interesting, much larger sample size. And they could only, according to them, only 2.4% of teens would fess up to vaping. Right. So they think that they're lying. But I'm very interested by this because does it mean they're lying? Or does it mean that the NYTS data is massively flawed? It, I'm le- Can it be both? I mean, I'm sure there's some that are lying. Is the National Youth Tobacco Survey flawed and this, you know? Kids are going to lie on either one of these, right? Kids lie. They're just, you have to understand that there's lying going on in both scenarios. But the thing is, like, what I'm really interested about this is the other thing, the reason that this was interesting to me, like extra interesting, is because the latest data from the National Youth Tobacco Survey reported that some 300,000 high school and middle school kids reported using heat not burn products, tobacco (sighs) products. So like ICOs. So National Youth Tobacco says some (laughs) 300,000 teens and middle schoolers are using ICOs or something like it. And I'm sitting here thinking, no, is like that, that does not seem possible. Are there even like, those products are not prolific enough in this country. I don't even think 300,000 adults use that, no. you know, heat not burn. It's no. in its infancy here. Like they couldn't even sell it here for a while until yeah. kind of recently. Like at the Ico And device. even now it's only in like one state. It's like Georgia's one the state, test. I but think. But somehow yeah, 300,000, somehow 300,000 youths all went to the store in Atlanta and got icoses and then started using them, even though they taste like complete garbage. See, I'm confused about that. And so <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, that doesn't seem like it could possibly be accurate. Mm-mm. Is there more that is not accurate? Like I, I'm not, this is you guys, this is not proof that the national youth tobacco survey is a lie. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying, but I think that they're, might be some problems there's some and i am interested in the fact that these researchers wouldn't even conceive of the idea that (laughs) their data was right and the national data was wrong no they just assumed that teenagers had to be lying right the national Um, data and that's why it didn't match up out of ninety three thousand five hundred and twenty seven adolescents right Six participants ended up in this program. Out of 93,000 adolescents, which we're told 20% of them should be everyday users of e-cigarettes. I mean, daily users, six. Six. They got, or at least current users, right? doesn't have to be right. 20% was current use. So current use. Should have used it Ever recently. Ever use, whatever. Six? 93,000 adolescents, they got six. 
That's what, okay, cool. Sure. Inability to recruit adolescents for a vaping cessation clinical trial because of questionable percentages, questionable, possibly questionable math. They ended up with six kids in this study. They couldn't even get enough vaping youths to do a, a cessation study. I mean, I love this. I, I find this interesting. <laughs> really, I, I love find this. this very interesting. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be very diplomatic here, and I'm yeah, not gonna say sure, that sure, this sure. proves anything. No, no, it's just. But it raises questions. Right. Ultimately, we have some questions. You know, we have some questions for CDC about the National Youth Tobacco Survey numbers. Mm-hmm. We have some questions for uh, Brian P. Jensen and Chloe Hanneman <laughs> who wanted to do this study. And due to not being able to find enough youth vapors, they, it, they said it was a, a failed clinical trial. Couldn't find enough youth vapors. Interesting. Interesting. I can't say I'm crazy surprised. I... I can't say I'm crazy surprised. I mean, and even just that they're like, we even took these kids into a private room with their parents weren't there and they Mm -hmm. still lied. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, why? I don't know. I mean, maybe there's a kid that's like, okay, I'll say it on this like written test or iPad test that I take at school that doesn't have my name on it, but I don't want to say it to my like doctor who like says it's confidential, but maybe you'll still tell. That's entirely possible. Completely. I am sure that there is a percentage of kids that did do that, that did sure. vape and lied because they are afraid their parents are going to find out. Right. But that's a really big difference really in numbers. T- t- like suspiciously big difference right. in numbers. Not just like, like, oh, give or take, whatever percentages. Right, I get sure, that. It's like, sure, what? Sure. That is a huge, huge discrepancies enormous enormous discrepancies and it almost points to like a trend uh rather than like active active use there's a i mean i can also see if there was a kid who was in there saying oh do you vape it's like well no i i did maybe like if you asked me this a few months ago i might have said yes i tried one at a party once i tried one at a party once or i tried one a month ago but i don't vape now could be a lot of that going on too. Right. Because that 20% is even one puff in the last 30 right. days. Ever right? use. Ever use. Not right. ever, but current. Current, current. ever. Oh, God. Because it's a 30 day. So ever use would be ever in your whole life ever, which is probably significantly higher, right? Right. Have you ever in your life tried an e cigarette? That's probably like, you know, 70% yeah. of kids, right? Like one kids, yeah. time three years ago. Sure. I tried, I tried a lot of shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But no, ever use is, uh, this is, you know, even once in the last month prior to them asking. So, right. you know, current, basically. But it it just, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> it's, I have it's fishy. so it's many fishy questions. It's fishy at the very least, yeah. I have it's so fishy. many questions. I just find it so satisfying that the sentence where they say, only 2.4% of adolescents reported any e-cigarette use, a stark contrast with the rates from school-based national estimates. Like they seem <laughs> so flabbergasted. And like we've been hearing, lo- like we talk about lower numbers, 2%, 0.8%. Like we run with these really low percentages. But for them, having this large percentage number in their head and only seeing 2.4%, they, that was probably like they were probably taken aback by that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's interesting to me that they don't even entertain the idea. Yeah. They don't even postulate that it could be the national data that's wrong and that their data is correct. Yeah. That I find interesting. I find this whole thing interesting. (laughs) And I mean, they go into much more detail than we've given you, but you can read this. You can read this whole thing and they're just falling over themselves, making excuses as to as to why. Oh, it's so bizarre. Why? You know. All these excuses, the mental gymnastics that they jumped through when they went from 93,000 adolescents to six eligible subjects, the mental gymnastics they jumped through to defend that is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. So there you go. Wrapped it up with some science-y stuff. I will have links 
all throughout the description. In fact, all the links are uh, hopefully already all there. I think I got them down there uh, already. So all the links will be down in the description to literally everything we talked about. Stay educated, stay as informed as you can. I personally feel like things are shifting around a little bit. There's some bigger names and voices kind of speaking up for vaping and for harm reduction. Uh, the emperor is naked and, and we can all see that he's naked and tobacco control is pretending that he has clothes on. And that's really where we're at right now. A hundred percent, I would say. That's so, how I feel. Yeah. yeah. And not everybody's looking at him. No. But those of us that are looking are like, bro, he's naked. Yeah, he is naked. That emperor is naked. Like, totes <laughs> naked. And it's camping totally for tobacco naked. for kids is like glancing. And they're like, no, he's not naked. He's not. I, I, I they, saw they're pants. telling I saw everybody pants. else who's not pants. looking that he's still wearing <laughs> clothes. clothes. Fully so I, that's this is a perfect analogy of how yep. I feel how it feels right now. Yep, it's exactly yeah. how it feels right yep. now. I feel yep. like it's going to feel this way for a little bit, but yeah. uh, I, I can't not I can't not do this. I can't not you know get mad at people on Twitter. <laughs> I can't and not eventually, put science out there. Eventually, everybody's going to turn around and see his wang. Okay. Eventually, eventually. everybody's going to turn around and see his wang. And then we're and all going to know. We, see, we've been staring at it like for I years mean, now. We're like, look, it's hanging out there all pink and naked. I, I don't know how you guys can see this. No yeah, one intimately. Like. Had one last I could super be a chat. subject matter expert. You are a subject matter expert. Oh, on the emperor's dong? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mech Soldier, if one here with the last super chat. Crazy late again. Sorry, I'll have to get you guys on the replay. I just want to stop by and say thanks, you guys, for all you do. Mech Soldier, it is my absolute honor and pleasure to do what we do. I appreciate you being here. Appreciate you catching the catching that replay, man. Catch it. So, yeah, I think that's uh kind of brings us to the end of uh, another successful TBN this week. There's just a lot of stuff going on. I try, you know, I feel like we both try to have our ears to the ground as far as like what's happening, things coming up, trying newsy things and sciencey things. And so we're just trying to get as much information out there as possible. I want to give one quick reminder. We were, we're not going to have a TBN next week. No TBN next week, just so you're aware. Next Tuesday is my birthday. So I'm like, I'm going to hang out. I'm going to lay in bed, smoke a lot of weed and watch Godzilla movies. I think like that's my plan. I'm not going to get on Twitter. Yeah. I'm not going to look at Stanton Glantz's blog. No, I'm not going to, you know, you should almost I'm not never gonna, do that. I'm not going to do a lot of things next week. And one of the things that I'm not going to do is have a TBN. I'll be, uh, watching Godzilla movies. So, Everybody in chat, sing. Until happy, happy birthday. You don't have to sing me happy birthday. That's okay, I'm not, I don't want to we'll do it alone. We'll it happy feels birthday. real I know. weird. It would be it's weird. I was like, I'll just do the first couple bars and then chat. You take over and chat. Okay. I can't chat, sing happy birthday over. alone. Uh, had one more super chat from Hunky Vape here. It says, interesting how the 2% rate they found trying to do this study was just a little over the rates of adolescent vaping daily in the UK. You're not wrong. Whoa. You're not Whoa, wrong. Oh, hunky. That is Nail way more in the line head. with UK numbers. It's that true. That is way more in line with UK numbers. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Uh, Alan in the chat said, uh, Giant Vapes emailed today and they are shipping again. So uh, head over there to Giant Vapes. Get all your vape stuff. What? What vape mail ban? What vape mail ban? So... Anyway, thank you guys. Again, no TBN next week, so take the week off. Do something fun. Don't think about advocacy. Don't think about Mike Bloomberg. Don't think about Stanton Glantz. Don't think about Wasserman. Why can't I remember her first name? Debbie. Debbie Wasserman. Don't think about her. Don't think about her. Just have a smooth sailing next week, and, and we'll catch back up with you guys. There's one more super chat. Right after. Oh, there's one more super chat? I don't want to leave out Tom. Appreciate that. Good call. Tom, uh, I'm going to vape my Guns N' Roses record so I can have metal in my lungs. That's wait, you're metal gonna, in your lungs. Wait, you're going to vape it? I thought he meant like chill and vape, and I was like, yeah. And then I was like, wait, he's going to vape, vape it? No. He's going to vape the music. He's going to vape the metal. Vape Unless it's like, metal. <laughs> like like figurative. Don't, don't, don't literally do that. Please. Take your Guns N' Roses record, roll it up. No, I'm just kidding. No. 
But uh, yeah, that's all we got today, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Keep being informed. Keep fighting the good fight. And uh, remember that no matter literally what anybody tells you, especially people like Mike Bloomberg, oh, especially people like whatever Wasserman, you know. Debbie. Debbie Wasserman. Vaping Whoa, Debbie. is The science shows that vaping is at least 95% less harmful than burning deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. The science shows that it's almost twice as effective as any NRT on the market. The science shows all of this. So trust the science. Remember that vaping rules. Be excellent to each other, you guys. See you in Take them out with a dance. Weeks. Oh, yeah, let's take them out with a dance. Peace out, guys. Dancing.